Hello again, it's a chapter 8 video and we're going to look at this chapter at improving the network version 1 project using inheritance. So just to recall, this is what the class diagram looked like previously for the message post and photo post classes. Notice that there's a lot of duplication, i.e. in the username, which are both the same, the likes, the comments, in the attribute section they are very very similar um, and so you can see a lot of code duplication that's taking place. What we can do to get around this code duplication and to write much better structured code is to use inheritance. So here we have a new class called post which is a uh, post class and then the subtypes of the post will be message post and photo post. Now you can see that a lot of the code duplication has been taken out. We've got a, a we've got a, t a, a post class which has the username, timestamp, likes, and comments attributes, and then the message post only needs a single attribute, which is message, and the photo post needs two attributes, which is the file name and caption. The rest of the attributes gets inherited from the post class. So let's introduce you to some new terms. The superclass is the one above in the inheritance hierarchy, so in our case it is the post superclass. The subclasses are the, are the classes below, so in our case it's the message post and photo post. The superclass will define the common attributes, so the subclasses will all be made up of these particular attributes. The subclasses inherit those superclass attributes, so you don't need to write them again. The subclasses also add other attributes. So inheritance hierarchies are throughout nature and are also throughout our code. And um, here we have an example of an animal inheritance hierarchy. Now the animal class will have certain attributes. Um, for example, it will have a size and a weight. Then you'll have a mammal or bird subclass, which have also got size and weight, but got some extra things. For example, a bird might have beak length or something, um, whereas um, the mammal might have some different based attributes. And as we go down to the different other parts of the hierarchy, you can see that in mammal you've got dog and cat subclasses, and then the dog has also got the poodle and dalmatian subclasses. Other examples we're going to come across when we look at the rest of this book. On chapter 9 there's a class hierarchy which uses an animal and then subclasses of the animal hierarchy will be the rabbit and fox classes. We then on chapter 11 we look at pictures and we do some different filtering on those pictures and use a class hierarchy in which to do that. So how do we go ahead and implement this inheritance? So what we, what we do in our particular case is we need to create our class post which takes in all of the common uh, attributes of the previous two posts that we've had. So we create that uh, class called post. Uh, there's no real difference in new, new terminology or new words or any keywords here, that's pretty much the same. The changes come when we implement the subclasses, so the subclasses here if it's a subclass of a specific class, of a specific superclass, then it needs to have the extends keyword put in at the at the start of the class. So in a photo, photo post that looks like that with the extends post and the message post will need an extends post as well. The superclass then, when we look in the internal side of the code, they look all pretty normal. I've omitted the constructor and methods here, but the fields look pretty similar to what we're used to. In terms of the subclasses, we'll see then that we've got our extends keyword, which has been put in for both of these subclasses. We've then got our fields, which look pretty similar, but those fields effectively get added on to the fields from the superclass. In terms of constructors, in the superclass, we pretty much normal looking constructor, everything looks the same in our constructor. It takes a single parameter of type string, which is called author. Now this is going to be important when we look at these subclasses. The subclasses, when we call the subclasses constructor, that's going to have to put some data into the parameter there. So let's have a look at our message post super, uh, subclass. rather. Now here we have our subclass. Now uh, if you notice in the constructor there, we've got a new keyword which is the super keyword. The super keyword effectively acts as a call to the constructor of the superclass. If you remember, the parameter taken by the superclass in this particular instance is a string author. So we need to put in exactly that type 
of objects into that super core. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be called author but it must be of type string and it will effectively be feeding in and representing the author uh, field in the super class. We then do a normal assignment which is message equals text there. So the super class constructor core. Subclasses constructors must always contain a super core. Now if a super class has got a constructor with an empty parameter list then if there's no super core written into the subclass, then the um, compiler itself will actually create one and put it in itself. But you don't need to actually do it if the superclass doesn't have any parameters in one of the constructors. However, if the uh, superclass doesn't have a constructor with an empty parameter list, then we will need to have a super core in the subclass constructor. Now, this the first statement in the subclass constructor must be that super cool. So here's some more examples of adding some more types to our class hierarchy. So we've got our super class post and subclass message post, photo post and event post. Here's some deeper hierarchy so depending on what you're trying to do with your particular application it might make sense to make some more deeper hierarchies to get a better understanding and um, redu reduction in code use throughout your hierarchies and throughout the different classes that you need within your application. Okay, let's have a quick look at the internal network uh, view of network version 2. Now what we're going to do is we're not going to consider the newsfeed class because we're going to consider the newsfeed class when we look at subtyping in the next video. So let's have a look at our subclasses here first. Actually, we'll look at the superclass first. So the superclass is as we expect. We import the java.util array, array list at the top because we're using our array list. Pretty much standard in terms of our attributes. Pretty much standard in terms of our assignment. Nothing new happening here. The methods shown here, the like, unlike, add comment, get timestamp, and display are all pretty much the same as we've done previously. So this is uh, this is this is nothing new in this post class here. The difference comes when we use the inheritance which we do in the message post here. So message post has got our attribute in there which is going to be our message because this is a specific message thing is where you need a message so that's what our message post is and we must use the extends post. Using the extends post will ensure that it inherits all of the attributes and methods from its from the post class. Now pretty straightforward in terms of the rest of what goes on, the only um, new thing we have to consider here is the constructor. So again, because the superclass post has a single constructor and that single constructor tapes, takes in one parameter of type string, then we need to put in a type string into the supercore here. We can't omit the supercore or else it will not compile in this particular instance. Um, so we do our supercall and then simply transfer the author which we're going to get from the message post which is created and put it into the super call there. The only other thing then is to have a getter of the particular string message which we're working with. So that's the message post subclass. Here's our photo post subclass. So again, this extends post is required so that all of the fields and attributes from the superclass are included in this. For the, because this is a photo post, the specific things you need for a photo are file name and caption, and they're added as string attributes here. Again, we without looking at the um, without looking at the other classes, without looking at the message post class, we can see that we're we're going to need a super core here. The super core here is going to need to be exactly the same as the message post class that we've done there because they're both inheriting from the post class. Um, so therefore we're going to need that author there. In our case here for our photo post we're going to need a file name and a caption um, and we're going to deal with that through having those as fields and taking those in in pretty standard assignment statements here. Again, we're going to use getters just to get the information for the file name and caption, um, and that will get the information from our photo post there. So again, uh, much less code and much easier to change if we want to change any parts of it because there's no real duplication throughout the class hierarchy. 
Okay, uh, that's pretty much how we'd improve the post classes. In the next video, what we're going to look at is typing, subtyping, and improving the newsfeed class. See you then.